On August 8, 1988, a man named Chris Nielsen was digging with a backhoe as part of a reconstruction project for Huntington Reservoir in Utah's Wasatch Mountains. Out of the sticky mud, he pulled what looked like to be a log. A closer examination revealed that it was actually a bone. A very large one. It turned out to be the front leg of a 15 foot tall Colombian mammoth. Part of a long curved tusk was also found. To the crew's credit, work halted and a concerted excavation began. That summer, about 90% of the mammoth skeleton was found during a meticulous recovery process. It was in remarkable shape, thanks mostly to the encasement of mud that had hovered around freezing for thousands of years, acting as the perfect refrigerator and preservation agent for this ancient mammoth. At the excavation, it was so fresh we thought we could smell rotting meat at one place, said David Gillette, who was Utah's state paleontologist at the time. Based on the wear and tear of its teeth, the big bull mammoth was likely around 60 years old, granddaddy age for an elephant. It was no charmed life on the edge of this receding alpine lake. Nearly all of his bones showed signs of severe and painful disease, mostly arthritis. The partially digested food in his intestinal tract revealed that his last meal was meagre and thin, mostly needles and twigs from a fir tree, sedge leaves and seeds. Finally, around 13,000 calendar years ago, a point representing the very end of mammoth existence in America, he keeled over and died in the mud atop this mountain, far from his ancestral home. Colombian mammoths were typically plains dwellers, so it was unusual to find one in the mountains at 9,000 feet above sea level. At the time, it was the highest mammoth skeleton ever found in North America. But when he died, the Pleistocene and the continent's mammoth species were in their twilight as the climate was getting warmer. It's likely the Huntington mammoth was moving upslope in search of cooler climes in the upper reaches of the Wasatch Mountains. But he wasn't alone. Several projectile points were also found at the dig site, leading to speculation that Paleo-Indians may have either hunted the mammoth or scavenged it after finding it dead. Word got out about the mammoth in 1988 and soon locals were sneaking onto the site and digging on their own, even though it was on federal land and they didn't have permission. A crew was called in to guard the area. That's apparently when the remains of a giant short-faced bear were found and whisked away. A single rib and part of its skull including several teeth. The story was that someone on the night watch duty took the bear parts and stowed them in a refrigerator. They were eventually returned, but the damage was done. Situational context is crucial in paleontological digs, and removing pieces before their location can be closely documented is like ripping pages from a book and trying to understand what they mean. Although the bare bones were recovered and placed safely in a museum, the physical context, including exact proximity to the mammoth and the human tools, was lost forever. Still, there was enough to scientifically piece together some of the story of this giant short-paced bear by Gillette, the Utah paleontologist, and David B. Madsen, both of whom worked at Utah's Division of State History. First of all, it was big likely in the same ballpark of the giant found in the early 1980s near the ancient Lake Bonneville that was estimated to weigh around 1400 pounds. The Huntington bear also had large teeth, a tall nasal cavity and an exceptionally squished snout. This individual was distinctly short-faced, an extreme among the short-faced bears, Gillette and Madsen wrote. And then there was the matter of the projectile points and other lytic tools found nearby. Some of them were similar to points found in western Wyoming from around 9,500 years ago. Others were comparable to those found higher up the Rocky Mountains of the same vintage, if not a bit older. Could it be that, at this ancient lake, the mammoth, the bear 
and the people were coexisting, each in their own desperate struggle for survival in a changing world. Maybe. The presence of these Paleo-Indian materials suggests, but cannot prove, that humans were contemporary with the Colombian mammoth and the short-faced bear at the Huntington Dam site, Gillette and Madsen said. Utah has long been a hotbed for Ice Age wildlife discoveries. About two miles away from the Huntington Reservoir, there is a site where American mastodons, extinct bison and extinct horses have been found. About 60 miles north, there is another rich Pleistocene find, Silver Creek, as it's known, including 29 species like mastodons, ground slots, dire wolves, saber-toothed cats, camels, horses and bison. The date there is from about 40,000 years ago, but what happened at Huntington may have been a final dramatic chapter in the final hours of the late Pleistocene. I'm guessing Arctodus was feeding on our poor dear mammoth, Gillette, the state paleontologist said at a community meeting a couple of months after the discovery. Perhaps it delivered the final blow. It's hard to know for sure, but the frozen dead mammoth, so well preserved in a cool boggy ground, might have been one of the last meals of the Huntington bear. No marks on one of the mammoth's wrist bones show a groove that matches the size of the teeth arrangement of the bear. State officials later revised what they think happened. It's possible that the bear fell on the carcass and died in the same place, they said. Or it's possible that a different short-paced bear had dined on the mammoth. It's certainly not out of the question. Years later, scientists published a paper after examining mammoth remains found near Saltville, Virginia, where extreme examples of carnivore gnawing were found. The mammoth had died and its carcass was probably partially submerged in water or mud and then a wolf and another meat-eating scavenger, possibly an American lion or a giant short-faced bear, had come along and gnawed on its heel bones with enough force to be identified by scientists thousands of years later. One of the largest carnivores to ever walk the land, the giant short-faced bear, or Arctodus, as it is scientifically known, terrorized prehistoric North America. Ice Age short-faced bears were the largest mammalian land carnivore to ever live in North America. These bears were nearly 1.5 meters high when walking normally, but stood about 3.4 meters tall when on their hind legs. They could have had a vertical reach of more than 4.3 meters. This is about one and a half times the size of a present-day Kodiak grizzly bear. Given their huge size and taste for meat, the short-faced bear has a surprising evolutionary history. Their closest living relative is the spectacled bear, which lives among the trees in the mountainous regions of western and northern South America. Spectacled bears have short, broad faces, like the Ice Age short-faced bear, but are nearly entirely herbivorous, preferring leaves, fruit and other vegetation. There is some debate regarding the diets and behaviour of the Ice Age short-faced bear, given its huge body stature, large molars and canine teeth, it is tempting to view them as menacing predators. However, investigation of their fossil skeletons reveals a much different picture. A prominent feature of the short-faced bear is the remarkably long, thin limb bones and feet that supported a heavy torso. These limbs were adapted for efficient long-distance pacing, rather than the explosive acceleration and high-speed pursuits typical of other large predators, like lions. The limbs and feet of a short-faced bear could not support their large bodies for a rapid acceleration or sudden changes in direction necessary to take down a fleeing bison or horse. The cranium also provides some clues to short-faced bear behaviour, the nasal opening is very large, suggesting that it had a pronounced sense of smell. This, combined with the long limbs, point to the short-faced bear as a solitary, wide-ranging scavenger of carcasses. Rather than killing on their own, the short-faced bear would probably smell the scent of meat in the wild, follow it to the carcass, 
chase off the lions or wolves and dine on the leftovers. Their large cheek teeth were probably effective at cracking long bones for their marrow and sharp fangs could deflesh a carcass. The chemistry of short-faced bear fossils bones found in Yukon and Alaska indicate a diet nearly completely composed out of meat. This model of the short-faced bear's hyper-carnivorous scavenging, however, is not universally accepted. Some scientists have recently suggested that the short-faced bear was neither particularly long-limbed nor short-faced, and proposed that they were omnivorous like most bears are today. More evidence, including new short-faced bear bones found in Yukon, will be needed to help solve this question. Arctodus inhabited vast regions of North America, including modern-day United States, Mexico, and parts of Canada. Its distribution covered a diverse range of habitats, from grasslands to forests, making it a versatile predator capable of adapting to various ecosystems. This adaptability positioned the giant short-faced bear as one of the dominant predators in its environment. Within these habitats, the Arctodus established territories that encompassed large areas. These territories were marked by the bear's distinctive claw marks on trees and rocks, serving as a warning to other bears and potential competitors. The size of its territory varied depending on the availability of resources, with larger territories in areas abundant with prey. Arctodus was known to be a solitary animal, with individuals typically avoiding direct contact with one another. However, during mating season, male bears would engage in fierce competition to win favour of females. These confrontations involved displays of strength and dominance, with the victor earning the right to mate. The reason for the giant short fair bear's extinction is unclear, but it is generally accepted that the extinction of larger prey species and increased competition from other species such as brown bears or even humans played a role in the disappearance of the giant short-faced bear during the Pleistocene-Holocene transition. To see an animal as fearsome as this must have been quite the experience for our ancestors, who travelled from Eurasia and first colonised the North American continent. At this time, America was teeming with megafauna, brought predators and prey. Of all these impressive creatures though, the giant short-faced bear must have stood out among the rest. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.